Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about understanding a programming language. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how do you know when you actually understand a programming language? Well, I would say when you most of the time at the very least don't have to look things up. I think that that is the best answer, because uh, I, I can't really give you a better answer to, the, uh, to this than that. Uh, as I, to give you an example, so I am born and raised a Swede, which is an amazing and fantastic thing, of course. But even though I have been speaking Swedish since I can remember, I still have to look up some words when we when I talk in my native language because I don't know the entire Swedish language. It's that simple. I don't need it. I can communicate with every other Swede on this planet, well, practically, and they can understand what I'm saying and we, I can understand what they're saying. And the same thing goes for you with programming languages and working in any programming language. If you can build all the things that you need to be built, you don't have to know about every single feature of the language. That's not practical. Uh, in some cases, there are. I mean, there are. I think that these things. I mean, there are. There are. They are curious, of course. But there are these people who really have, they have a knack for this thing. And there's these articles you've probably have seen at some point, where it's like, oh, ten obscure features of, say, JavaScript that you probably didn't know about. And I kind of go, well, if uh, I'll just give this a really quick read. I'm not going to feel bad about the fact that I don't know them because. Why would I care about them unless they have a practical value or something something like that, right? So usually what I argue is that the thing that you should focus on is the stuff that makes you productive. That's like you know that you understand a programming language when you know how to perform the tasks that are required for you because the programming language that you're using, it's just a tool. It's just a tool for you to be able to fulfill some business requirement or some pro fix some type of problem, right? And as long as you understand your programming language well enough to know, okay, this is probably the best pattern to use in this language to do this thing. And in some cases you're going to go, well, actually this language is not fit to do this thing. It's actually not this, it's not a good, uh, good language to use it for. Well, then you really do understand your language and you can be, co of course, you can be like super, 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 uh, into the low details of how the language works and like really go deep but to say that you understand the programming language it's fine that as long as you can do this do the work that is most commonly expected of you within that language so an example would be if you work in C well what type of work are you usually doing in C or well, the people who work in C they usually have a range of tasks that they will be allocated and as long as you can do those things with C then you then you know C even though you could be much 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 better at it same thing goes for Java or PHP or JavaScript or whatever you look at what you usually are supposed to be doing within the role that you have and as long as you can express solutions that are well working and not like really really bad in the language well then you know the language usually people put their programming language on their CV uh, when they have that level of experience it's this subjective type of thing I had this other question a while back where someone asked me why is it that the back-end developers don't say that they are front-end developers because they, of course they know some they know CSS and HTML right and it's very simple because they know that if they're going to swing that they're a front-end developer, they pretty much have to know a framework such as uh, Angular or React, like an SBA uh, solution, because they know that from the vast, the perspective of the vast majority of uh, people who do that sort of work, they have like a range of things that or tools that they identify as, yeah, this is the range of stuff that you need to know in order to call yourself a front-end developer or whatever, right? And it's the same thing with any programming language. If you're supposed to know, quote-unquote, the language, well, you probably should know what a for loop is or like how to uh, do certain operations and and switches and etc, etc, right? Uh, in order for you to say that you really understand it. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you know every single detail about that language. It's 
it's not practical. If you can uh, use the 80-20 rule here. If you can do 80% of the stuff that you need to do, then look up the other 20% and say that you know this stuff. So what I want you to take away from this is that productivity is king. It's always going to be king. And as long as you can produce solutions that are accepted uh, w uh, from the community within the language that you're working, uh, just say then yes you understand the programming language you don't have to be a master and know everything about a programming language to say that you know it you simply need to be able to do what is most commonly expected of you to do or to be able to do within that language and it changes a little bit in a language such as C it might be one thing in Haskell which is an extreme case of course there's like a way of doing things in Haskell and so it varies like right in PHP and Java and JavaScript and C sharp and etc cetera, etc cetera. there's all these different things that you could possibly have to sort of know in order to say that you really understand a programming language and as long as you understand 80% of the stuff that is required in order to do the daily grind of whatever language you pick well then yes put it on your CV or say that you know what because uh, it doesn't really matter to people that you know every single little thing. I mean, in many cases, not even the people who maintain the languages themselves will know every single detail about the language. I mean, if you look at a language such as, say, Scala, I don't know if anybody knows all the features of Scala. Have a great day.